Lord Frederick. A name that sends Nintendo fans into vivid feelings of... Who? Ah, right, yeah, not K. Rule. Yeah, I, I didn't actually finish Tropical Freeze. Great game, though. <sighs> In all seriousness, the final boss of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is, unfortunately, remembered for being a merely serviceable ending to one of the last decade's premier platformers. Everything leading up to the guy is fabulous. From the Kong slowly reclaiming a frozen over Donkey Kong Island world by world, to the previous Snowmad Generals raising the bar for world bosses with some truly fantastic showdowns and also this pufferfish. Inflate himself! Everything is set for the Viking leader to shine as the epitome of what Tropical Freeze could offer. And the most anyone can say about the guy is, man, wouldn't it have been cooler if he were K. Rule? <laughs> it's such a disappointing note to end on. And yet, rarely do I see any questions as to why. Because Lord Frederick serves as a very well thought out boss battle, a worthy finale in any other game, but being in Tropical Freeze specifically makes all of Frederick's great efforts ring hollow. And it's important to delve into what puts this walrus on thin ice. Let's go, dude! It's prudent to note that before you face the Snowmad War Chief, you have no idea who Lord Frederick actually is. His general body shape is revealed. Sure, he's a big dude with a giant horn. Oh, big! But Freddy is always kept in shadow, shrouded in a layer of secrecy. Who is the boss of the Snowmads? Suspicion starts to build as a certain deposed crocodilian regent has just the right body shape and just the right grudge to hold against the Kong family to come up with a scheme this harebrained. And upon reaching the Volcano Dome to take on the invaders... Oh, it's just a big walrus man. That's, uh... Okay, no need to keep the guy any sort of secret, but... You know what? That's an unfair expectation to put on him. Lord Frederick doesn't deserve to be in K. Rool's shadow. Tropical Freeze's bosses have been mostly excellent. Let's throw down and see what new tricks this crafty king has to offer. All of his attacks are variants of K. Rool. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> Boldly inviting a direct comparison to DK's nemesis of old, Lord Frederick is glad to litter his moveset with direct homages to the Kremlin commander. Fuck you. His charge is an analog to K. Rool's run from the first game, though now a player has to more carefully bounce on his rear end instead of waiting for him to come to a stop. Fred's got the mad hops from the Kremlin King, only now his titanic girth sends whatever he jumps off of partially into the lava below. You even have to toss projectiles he generates into the background, a la Donkey Kong Country 3's Nautilus fight. Albeit this is a lot more direct and Frederick's happy to shuffle around like a soccer goalie. And these three techniques are all the attacks Lord Frederick has to offer in his first phase. Oh no! While there are noted differences from K. Rule fights, and most of them modern improvements that make the King's simple patterns a bit trickier to deal with, it's hard to feel like this fight isn't just... Now that's what I call K. Rule, Volume 5. Oh, yes. But after three hits, Frederick continues to follow K. Rule's lead and changes phases, opening things up by summoning Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. This terrifying beast swept the Kong family off the island at the start of the game, turning it cold and desolate. And Frederick uses the awesome power of the Frozen Dragon to... do K. Rool's cannonball attack from DKC1. But this time it makes ice physics happen when it crashes into the ground! Oh, and when you get him into Phase 3, he shoots it right at you, so you can do the cannonball sequence from DKC2, but dragons! Mm. There are embellishments here and there, but nothing that Lord Frederick does is much more than an Ice Viking-themed homage to the Kong's old nemesis. And it does take away from the opportunity for Frederick to have a personality of his own. 
As simple as Donkey Kong bosses are, they're allowed to show a lot of themselves in what little screen time they're allotted. From belching barrels, to evil snowmen that make Charles Dickens references, to reject Terminator Jack in the boxes, the foes of Kong do as much as they can to stick out to the player. K. Rule himself is the epitome of this, a horribly insecure villain who fakes his own defeat in order to try to get a cheap shot, constantly reinventing his own look, blows up his people's ancestral homeland out of his own hubris, My pretty little island is no more. <laughs> and he makes funny noises when he gets hit. <laughs> While K. Rule might have some of the most reverence of all the villains of his era, Mechanically, he's only really been a great boss in Donkey Kong Country 2. It's his character, his willingness to play the buffoon, toy with players' expectations, and still provide a reasonable challenge that makes K. Rule so enduring. Where I come from, we do things with style, drama, flair! Lord Frederick copies K. Rule's mechanical identity very well, but not only is he taking from two less-than-stellar appearances, but the greatest strength of those appearances, the bombastic, meta-leaning personality of the king-slash-captain-slash-baron, was replaced with only a generic Viking brute who sometimes does touchdown dances. Which, come on, man. Bashmaster had more personality, and he's a realistic-looking polar bear whose entire story is... My ice cream cone. But you know what? Lamenting over what Lord Frederick isn't is a bad way of thinking about it. Let's take K. Rule totally out of the picture, and just judge the walrus warlord on the merits of how good his boss fight is, and how well he props up Tropical Freeze's unique strengths. And in that regard, Frederick is completely and definitively mediocre. In order to actually land any lasting damage on the homewrecker, you've got to hit him once during his running around in the background phase, so he'll let you beat him up directly. This game of dodgeball persists during all three phases of the fight. Hitting him during it doesn't actually damage him, just swaps things to his foreground phase. And it's never made more difficult so much as it is made more annoying. Frederick is never threatening when you're trying to lob a penguin at his head, simply trying to juke you out and hoping the ice carpet he spread for you will take care of the rest. And if you miss all your shots, he'll just toss out the same predictable attack pattern that you'd have to be sleeping in order to get hit by, taking out a significant deal of tension from the fight. Other bosses in the game have waiting patterns, sure, but there's always some level of threat, an active element that a player has to constantly adjust to, and at the best of times, moments where you can cut phases short with incredibly clever play. The ice dragons and raining penguins do not do enough to be a consistent and active threat, making a majority of the fight a waiting game that's more dull than it is frustrating. And while the rest of Frederick's attack patterns are fine enough, they never really exceed fine from either a spectacle or challenge standpoint. Tropical Freeze is a game that is exceptional at ramping up tension, creating dramatic set pieces that crescendo with insanely creative and thrilling moments of spectacle. Its bosses are much the same, Scowl slowly letting players ascend up as he attempts to blow them off Autumn Heights, Bashmaster finally using his hammer at the end to send super-fast projectiles at a player for staining his fur, you kill Kaboom's family and he summons their ghosts to get revenge? Frederick may have the Ice Dragons, but they're introduced in such an uninteresting way in his most repetitive phase that when he finally shoots them out directly at you, the pattern of, oh, jump over this one, duck under the next, is far from thrilling. There's never any final arc to fighting Lord Frederick. No super phase, no great bit of character that pushes him over the top. You just land the final hit on him and go, uh-huh, it's over? Even compared to the rest of the Snowmad clan, Frederick falls disappointingly flat. Sorry, dude.
There is one attack that Frederick didn't crib from K. Rule, letting him shoot the entire arena into the air with lava geysers, the player having to stay airborne as long as they can until solid ground appears underneath, or else risk sinking into the instant death lava. This is Lord Frederick at his best, proudly throwing his weight around and forcing the player into a literal do-or-die situation. And if the fight leaned more into moments like this, Freddy would have a chance of being a really memorable final baddie. But as it stands, it's a single attack in a collection of adequacy. On paper, Lord Frederick seems like a guaranteed success. Take the best of the series' most beloved boss fights and mix them together in a gauntlet with a few twists to make it more challenging. But not only do you have to top those original encounters when you so dedicatedly go that route, you need to build an identity for your new boss out of them. And unfortunately, Lord Frederick falls short of both. Do I think that if you simply transplanted K. Rule into this fight, no other changes, it would save the encounter? Ah. Well, it'd certainly give the bout a bit more character and would have been a cool revival for the king. But, nah. <laughs> the fight would still be pretty mid, and it would miss what made Tropical Freeze so special. For a game that's so dedicated to pushing the Donkey Kong Country series forward, Lord Frederick is unfortunately stuck in the past. And it's a shame, as he doesn't have to be. Consider what you want to bring forward, the best elements from the games and fights you love and how to capitalize on and celebrate the themes of your own game through your boss fight. Because the Snowmad King certainly proves that there's a right and a wrong way to design for imitation.